Hi, and welcome to Insights and Perspectives from the San Jose Santa Clara League of Women Voters. We're very happy to welcome you to our show today. And I want you to remember that the League is a nonpartisan political organization. We encourage informed and active participation in our government, and we influence public policy through education and advocacy. Today, we're delighted to have with us the Deputy Director of Environmental Services for the City of San Jose. Joe Zentek comes to us today to share with all kinds of new things that are going on in redevelopment and in our environment and to make our city even a better and uh, fresher, um, more environmentally friendly place to live. So welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, Joe, could you share with us maybe a little bit about how you came to work in this field? Uh, it's a very prominent field today, but it hasn't always been. Sure. I've been uh, with the City of San Jose working on environmental issues uh, for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started being very interested in the environment, especially here on Sil Silicon Valley, uh, growing up here. Uh, my mom was a chief of staff for a county supervisor oh. here in Santa Clara County. And uh, she took me on all the creek cleanups and recycling uh, drives. And I, we were the first on the first inaugural ride of BART when it opened. And that really wow. opened my eyes at kind of a young age to environmental issues. And I continued through um, junior high and through college at UC University of California, Stan Santa Cruz, studying mm -hmm. environmental issues. And I got this job. Uh, right, my first job at San Jose right out of college working on uh, solid waste programs. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just stuck with it <laughs> and moved up the line to a very important position now. Yeah, thank you. With uh, so much uh, to cover. Um, this is the fifth year since the adoption of the, um, I believe it was called our uh, Zero Waste Strategy for the City of San Jose. And uh, I know that it encompasses a lot of things. Um, and we'll look, uh, we're going to be looking at a series of slides that will help people to understand um, some of the programs and also uh, the uh, focus of you and uh, the entire department. Um, the first slide we're going to look at has actually a picture of the uh, program when it came out in 2008. Um, and also the green vision goals. And those are a whole other thing yeah. that we need to spend some time on, certainly. Um, and the most obvious one to most people, of course, is that your department, um, garbage picks up and things are recycled. Um, and uh, that's the picture that's on the screen for our uh, listeners to see at the moment. So that's the most obvious because there are signs on those containers <laughs> and they're part of our weekly life um, if we live in the city of San Jose. But I'd like you to tell us a, a bit about how this came to be and uh, what we're looking at and as it moves forward. Yeah, uh, San Jose has a very interesting history with regard to recycling. Uh, it was actually the success of San Jose's uh, curbside uh, three-sort recycling program in the late 1980s that uh, led some um, state legislatures to decide that if San Jose can do it, just a regular city, mm -hmm. um, that really there's no reason why every city in the state of California could uh, not recycle like San, o San Jose did. And that led to the passage of AB 939, which required every city in California to recycle 50% of waste by the year 2000. And that was about the time I, I started at, at the city in 1990. You know, it was mm -hmm. a very exciting time. We were taking our original pilot recycling programs and bringing them to the whole city, both uh, curbside recycling, our very unique uh, yard waste collection program mm -hmm. that's uh, loose in the street, collection. Uh, no city in California collects uh, yard waste that way anymore. Oh my. And um, our apartment recycling program we started developing in the early 1990s. So San Jose kind of has a unique history in California for 
waste management and being a leader uh, in waste management. I didn't realize that we were so forward thinking. <laughs> uh, we, and when you visit other places, uh, you do notice the differences. Um, but I, having lived here all this period of time, I'm certainly familiar with those early days. But I, I didn't realize we were the only ones still doing the loose pickup yeah. of yard. And you know, that's uh, a really a vital service, absolutely. Um, yeah, residents, um, our program allows residents to put out as much uh, yard waste as they want in the piles every week. And it's a great program in that the yard waste we collect is very clean. It, it, not being in a cart, there's no incentive to put garbage in it. Mm -hmm. So we're able to use that yard waste. Uh, we compost it uh, in southern Santa Clara County, and it goes to organic farms. It's certified to be used on organic farms because it is so clean. So it's a unique way to collect it, but it's an inexpensive way mm -hmm. to collect it, and we're able to use it in ways other programs that have uh, more dirty material aren't able to use it. I think that's one of the keys, uh, is that separating yeah. the waste. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that recently um, you've made some changes, especially with um, commercial Collection. Yeah, we uh, launched a new, uh, really world-class commercial solid waste system last July, so it's been uh, almost a year implemented. Uh, as part of that program, we we are have finished building one world-class uh, waste uh, processing facility out by Newby Island Landfill in San mm -hmm. Jose. And we have a, a slide that was just up on yes. the screen briefly um, mentioning this yeah. new program, but please continue. Uh, and then we're also, so that facility takes uh, waste from all commercial establishments, including the um, uh, SAP Center, formerly the uh, HP Pavilion, oh. um, all the big tech companies to the small businesses, and we collect it uh, in wet and dry containers. And then that facility uses really high-tech German equipment. Uh, it's the most advanced in the world, as I said, to t separate paper, plastic, and organic waste mm -hmm. uh, from, the gar from the wet and dry streams. The organic waste currently is going, so that's food waste largely okay. uh, from restaurants and, and cafeterias and, and wherever else we get food waste from commercial garbage. Currently, we're composting it. Um, but uh, come early 2014, it will go to a, another state-of-the-art facility that we're building in San Jose across from the water pollution control plant. Oh, and yes. uh, we'll make methane gas and compost there. It's called, to a technical term, dry fermentation anaerobic digestion. But we're the first. <laughs> That's catchy. Yeah. So we're making gas using microbes at the facility and we'll be the first uh, commercial scale plant in operation. We've just had a great deal of national and international interest in our program. We've been able to triple our commercial recycling rate oh uh, just goodness. in the first year. This morning I was presenting our program at 6 in the morning on a conference call with Pune, India, who's San Jose's sister city. Okay. And on Tuesday I was uh, flown out by the city of Houston, Texas, which is the fourth largest city in the country, to uh, present our commercial system because they're looking at making that the model for their uh, program in Houston that they just got a, a grant from the Bloomberg Foundation for. Oh wow! So it's uh, we've had a uh, city of Los Angeles up to see it. It's just a real cutting edge facility and way to get high diversion from the commercial sector. And the facility itself operated by Republic Services at the uh, by 237 and Dix Dixon Landing Road is just really amazing uh, infrastructure. We've been able to employ 77 of Republic Services uh, recycling sorters there, um, doing some really. Uh, Do you have a equipment. picture of that of them working in that yet? There may be one on the on the slides that uh -huh. we were uh, looking right. at. I know. Um, and what? So there they oh, are. There they are. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Right. It's just uh, just been getting a lot of international attention to this facility, and it's just really a privilege to have this open up in San Jose. Right, and you said the equipment has come from Germany? Yeah, that's all German uh, technology. So we use uh, optical sorters and a lot of uh, eddy currents and air to be able to separate the oh. materials so we can really uh, market the material for its uh, best use, highest and best use. Uh, so paper, we can separate it, keep it cleaner, um, so we can market that. Uh, That's the dry. Yes, uh -huh. yes. 
and then the wet is done differently. The wet uh, is separated at this facility and then it will be going to the uh, a plant that we're building to make methane gas okay. uh, in early right. um, 2014. So, so that will actually um, uh, create an income, will it? The facility uh, itself was about $50 million uh -huh. and the, the plant that's being built is about $30 million. Um, and, and those are all private investments. Both facilities will serve, uh, can serve Southern uh, San Francisco Bay. They're not just limited to San Jose, but the investment um, was made by, by Republic Services and Zero Waste Energy Development Company. Okay. Um, so any energy that they get will be used to offset the cost, the cost. of bidding, building the facility. They did receive um, one of the, the Zero Waste Energy Plant did receive a federal grant Okay. Um, to help offset its cost. But that's the only public money that went into the program? Yes, uh -huh. yes. That is very impressive. Yeah, what we did with the zero waste facility is, is uh, they built it on water pollution control plant uh, buffer land. Oh, okay. And um, they did all the uh, development to bring the parcel up, up to standards. They mm -hmm. brought all the utilities again. It was very expensive. So if it comes to a point where they uh, we no longer operate that facility there. Uh, we will be the be we will get the benefit of having all the utilities brought to that parcel in a much more valuable uh, mm -hmm. piece of real estate than we had when mm -hmm. we started. Right, right. Fascinating, really, um, that we could be the leaders in this uh, and have so many, obviously, international interest as well as yeah. Other it big was cities. a good. Uh, it was uh, great that we were able to do this with so with basically no public investment. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, really looking at public-private partnerships where we could provide the recycling stream or uh, lease the land um, and be able to do this with so little, with n no public investment. Right. Um, I have a feeling that probably we would be attractive to this kind of facility um, with, because we have a history of being recyclers in, and doing so much on our own. Well, in certainly, history. I think uh, being such an innovative city and being mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, and then being really able to demonstrate that we're willing to look at ways to partner, even though we can't provide cash yes. or, or finan financing, that we're really able to partner uh, with other resources to bring these facilities to San Jose. Mm -hmm. So our reputation yes. did as yeah. well. Yeah. And it helps. Um, uh, next time the city wants to do, our, and we're always looking at, at public-private partnerships that are mutually beneficial, this just is another prominent showcase that we're able to do it and do it successfully no matter what the uh, uh, project could mm -hmm. be, waste-related or environmental-related or not. Right. We're going to pause for a moment and have a fun fact, mm -hmm. uh, which we always enjoy. Yeah. Welcome back, and we're again so happy to have you with us today, Joe. Um, taking it from uh, that big picture down to our more local scene, um, San Jose, of course, is one of the cities that has uh, had the policy of no plastic bags. And has that made a big difference? Uh, we see uh, some controversy in some of our neighboring towns about whether they'll even pass that. Yes. Um, and, um, we are continuing with that. Yeah, I mean, San Jose uh, worked really hard with our um, stakeholders from businesses to residents on how best, and our hauling community on how best to implement a plastic bag ban. Our big concern, and one of the interesting things about the Environmental Services Department is that we've got a lot of programs within one organization, so we do uh, projects to protect our watersheds, our creeks, the southern San Francisco Bay, making sure the, the water that uh, flows into the bay is clean. 
Uh, we do have a, a very large wastewater treatment plant uh, that we operate out of our department, sustainability projects, renewable energy, um, and we provide uh, drinking water for about 10% uh, of the San Jose population. And that really gives us a unique opportunity for our disciplines to kind of work together mm -hmm. on initiatives. And the plastic bag um, b ban that we did is a great example of that. It was really driven by our need and we're under state regulations to make sure to get litter out of our creeks. Uh, as you may know, we don't have a system to treat water that goes into the storm drains, and we have uh, 30,000 storm drains within the city. So whatever is in the street, and if it fits in the storm drain, it's going to flow to the creek. Yes. And it is a real challenge to keep pollutants out of the creek. So one of the issues that we had was plastic bags. Uh, they're just... Um, they're called t-shirt bags in the, as the technical term, which I learned <laughs> as part of this process. But uh, they're very light. Uh, they uh, are just very susceptible to litter, and mm -hmm. they get tangled in creeks. They formed islands of plastic debris. They just facilitated uh, making our, our creeks very polluted. And mm -hmm. then uh, when you had these islands, they just attracted other types of uh, plastic to kind of form these dams. We had damming situations with the plastic. So uh, we really, and there's an alternative to plastic bags. You know, you can bring your own bag. Mm -hmm. So uh, we work together with the state, uh, with uh, nonprofit agencies, uh, with other cities to come up with a solution that really addressed the litter issue. It wasn't so much a solid waste recycling issue because mm -hmm. bags obviously are light and they don't make a, lo sure. a big uh, uh, take up a lot of room in landfill but it really was a litter issue so we brought forward um, our proposal to city council which did get approved after a, a long due diligence period period of um, banning uh, plastic bags and then charging a 10 cent fee on paper bags uh, at uh, retail stores um, including grocery stores. So we had gone beyond just dealing with grocery stores right. in this ordinance, which made it different. And after the first year, we went back to those storm drain catch basins mm -hmm. that collect the litter that goes in the storm drains, and we're really able to find that we had improvement, a significant improvement um, on the plastic bags that were there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we uh, really think it, it was attributable to our ban. Um, and we did find that that 10 cent fee really deterred people from even using the paper bags. And you'd think it's not a big portion of your total grocery bill if you're at the right. grocery store. But I've seen people even at our uh, Targets in San Jose uh, have their grocery cart full of stuff and just say, you know, I'm not willing exactly. to pay the 10 cents. So it's, we, what we didn't want to happen is people to switch from mm -hmm. uh, plastic to paper, but that 10 cent fee is really deterred some of that and I think people are getting more used to bringing their own bags and we our, our program has been a model we've had cities both in and out of California adopt kind of the San Jose model for uh, uh, reducing plastic bags with that ordinance so it's it was a big success and and showed results where we needed to see it which was in the creeks mm -hmm. right yes you do hear about uh, the plastic bags that they find in uh, the bay, Monterey Bay specifically, yeah. because of all the marine life and all, and the controversy now in Santa Cruz <laughs> about yes. whether they'll adopt it or not. Yeah. I thought it was it's quite a fun, yeah. I, well, I think it's a fun argument that so, they're having. Yeah, and so <laughs> the nec next um, pollutant we're looking at is uh, expanded polystyrene foodware, oh. which people, uh, I think, call styrofoam. Um, and a lot of cities, in this case, uh, we've been able to benefit from a lot of other cities in the Bay Area already have ordinances, mm -hmm. so we've really been able to study what they're doing and looking to bring um, uh, an ordinance uh, for our council to consider uh, in early fall of right. this year on right. um, polystyrene foodware. Because there is alternatives uh, for that. Yes, there, there all are alternatives too, and and like I said, we're, we're hosting a, a vendor fair so so our business our restaurants can see what the alternatives are and uh going to likely look at a phased in approach for maybe uh larger chains uh 
first mm -hmm. and phase in some of the smaller stores can be the benefit of the l larger chains driving some of the market for the alternatives to keep right. the price low. And to make it more competitive. Yes. Yes. Because yes. that, I think, is the biggest issue for m many of the smaller yes. agencies that would want to be in a part of this program, but it's difficult because yes. of the cost. And you know we're we're also looking to see if the state will eventually adopt uh, ah. both uh, a, a, a legislation that mm -hmm. may address plastic bags and polystyrene foodware as a result of all these cities taking action. I mm -hmm. mean it would um, obviously be the best because the waterways go across all jurisdiction Definitely. boundaries if we had similar uh, uh, regulations for all local government. Uh, agencies mm -hmm. so that we can uh, really work on getting the creeks clean. You'd like to think people would just stop using things that aren't good for the environment, but there's that, um, that convenience that uh, un unfortunately uh, sticks its head up and, and humans need to be urged. <laughs> yeah, well, and we're really looking with polystyrene, uh, looking at phasing that out. There really should be alternatives that, that won't mm -hmm. really impact uh, consumers. Yes. Uh, that much. Right, right. Love those leftovers to yeah, take yeah, home from yeah. the restaurants. <laughs> um, uh, so our ordinance for uh, the bags and now uh, we're looking at styrofoam and, and that kind of thing. Uh, all have come through the city government um, with a lot of support, as you said, yes. from lots of different groups on that. Um, and. What do we have uh, in terms of our future? What's on the horizon? Uh, so we're really looking back at our original recycling program, mm -hmm. our uh, single family curbside program, and seeing if we can find a way to get the food waste out of the garbage, because that's still oh. the last big remaining component. And we've got these new facilities, like I said, the um, uh, new facility we're building on the at the treatment plant lands and some additional composting facilities that have come up uh, within Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. But just trying to get, get that material so it's ef efficiently um, extracted from the garbage and composted is, is a bit of a challenge. For apartment waste, and um, San Jose is the best performing apartment recycling program in the world, we actually take all the garbage from apartment dumpsters and sort it in oh. another facility in San Jose, oh, and then we we compost all the, um, the what we can't uh -huh. sort uh -huh. uh, at our composting facility in Southern Santa Clara County, and we have an 80% diversion rate for that program. Oh my. So we're trying to see if there's a way we can efficiently do that with uh, regular curbside single family service. Uh, what we've been able to do with the apartment program, and that it also that program is also a, a national model, um, and that program allowed us to really um, believe that we could accomplish a lot with the revised commercial program. Okay. So the commercial program is kind of one evolution up our previous apartment recycling uh, okay. program. Okay, right. Oh, that's interesting um, because they are just huge dumpsters, and there's so many apartments and condo developments. So what we do with that program is uh, it's always better to to separate your recyclables because they stay cleaner. Mm -hmm. So we have recycling containers available for apartments to have next to their dumpsters, but then we've got this amazing backup system where we take all the garbage and sort it again um, uh, at this facility. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing that goes to landfill is the residue that we can't uh, recycle or compost from that system. Right. So that really leaves single family uh, um, uh, organic, yeah. single family food waste is kind of our frontier that we're trying to find a way to tackle. And we've done some pilots uh, with that respect, um, but it's it's uh, probably gonna take a couple, uh, another year or two to hone sure. in on the best solution for sure. that. Sure, yeah, like we compost at home, so our garbage is very, light. <laughs> well, the most efficient uh, thing to do actually is composting at uh -huh. home. I mean, that there's no uh, truck emissions from that. You mm -hmm. re reuse it on site. So we do offer, but not all residents are willing to do that. Right. But for those who are, we do offer extensive um, compost training programs in partnership with Santa Clara County uh, to really uh, look at, uh, really get people comfortable with composting. Right. And I know you provide containers or... Yes. Um, 
things like really that for uh, people who high want quality to. Yes. Yeah, compost bins for people willing to do it. So right. you're definitely a hero willing to do that. <laughs> um, well, that kind of information is on your website yes. too. Uh -huh. So if people are interested in pursuing this or trying it in a small way, uh, they can certainly go yes. there and find out more and where they can get the information and, and containers and yes. stuff like that. Right. Uh, SanJoseCA.gov. Right. You can get to all city services. Right. On that website. Inclu and a very nice one for environmental yes. Yes. services. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the um, uh, Environmental Innovative Center. What is that? So that's the other big uh, construction project we're working on this year in addition to the um, uh, energy facility. Mm -hmm. So that we're building that on uh, Las Plumas Avenue and it will be a center um, that will provide the, own, the, the largest permanent household has a, this waste drop off facility oh. for residents of Santa Clara County, about a 10,000 square foot facility. Currently what we've been doing, because San Jose doesn't have a permanent facility, uh -huh. is we partner with the county and um, operate mobile sites at parking lots. Um, uh, mostly, I, I, there's one at the v, uh, VTA lot on um, 85, oh. Highway 85 and Blossom okay. Hill. The way residents use this pro program is they uh -huh. have to make an appointment. They cannot come oh. without making an appointment. So this will make a big difference. So yeah, we'll have, uh, we're shooting to have more appointments available and uh, more hours. It's, uh, there's just so much waste that it's actually illegal for residents to dispose of in their garbage and this facility will really make it easier for residents Thank to bring you. that. Thank you Here. so much, Joe. Sure. You've just given us so much information <laughs> and we've enjoyed having you. And for further information about the League of Women Voters, please go to our website and uh, we invite you to become involved uh, and check out our award-winning um, uh, Smart Voter website as well. And of course the city website will give you information about all of these wonderful environmental programs. Thank you.